In the heart of Ghana's vibrant landscapes, an artist emerged whose work defied convention and redefined the boundaries of contemporary art. This is the story of El Anatsui. El Anatsui is celebrated for his unique technique of transforming discarded materials like bottle caps, aluminum cans, and copper wire into monumental and visually stunning tapestries. These artworks, resembling magnificent cloths, challenge traditional notions of sculpture and redefine the boundaries between sculpture and painting. El Anatsui was born in 1944 in Anyako, a town in the Volta region of Ghana. He spent his formative years in a region inhabited by the Iwe people, known for their rich cultural heritage. During his early years, Anatsui was exposed to the Iwe culture, which greatly influenced his artistic sensibilities. The last of 32 siblings, El Anatsui was primarily raised by his uncle, who had a significant Christian orientation. I lost the mother early. And uh, some of these things could be on the realm of speculation. But gleaning from, you know, sometimes the conversation we have with the artist, uh, it is possible for us to arrive at certain conclusions. Um, yes, it was uh, the idea of going away from his immediate nuclear family meant that there should be some degree uh, accompanying uh, degree of uh, loneliness but the anatsui that i know transforms whatever condition whatever situation into uh, uh, creative possibilities that could be one of the reasons why uh, it was not so much attached to a particular spot they liked moving because from the word go, from infancy, I started moving. Growing up in a traditional Yue community, Anatsui was exposed to the local customs, rituals, and artistic traditions. The cultural milieu of his upbringing, infused with spiritual beliefs, storytelling, and artistic expressions, had a profound influence on shaping his worldview and artistic sensibilities. Anatsui's early experiences in Ghana provided him with a strong foundation rooted in African culture. Yeah, I think you made mention of being interested in letters, that, you know, alphabets. Those were the first things that were of interest to him. He said that in class sometime in the past. I remember that. The vibrant colors, intricate patterns, and symbolic elements prevalent in UA art and everyday life would later influence his artistic style and thematic explorations in his artworks. Anatsui's interest in art emerged during his formative years, but his initial exposure to Western art was limited. He began his academic journey by studying fine arts at the College of Art, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, located in Kumasi, Ghana. After completing his studies in Ghana, Anatsui moved over to the University of Nigeria, Nsuka, in 1975 to start a teaching career. He had applied to teach at his alma mater, but his application was turned down. I had applied to my uh, alma mater, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, who also had an advertisement for uh, positions that I thought I could you know, apply for, and they sent a reply saying, no, you have to do five years outside before we can, before you qualify to be uh, employed by us. Uh, Ghana's loss became Sukar's gain. Hmm. 
His decision to go to Nasuka was significantly influenced by the famous Ghanaian sculptor Vincent Kofi, who had been in the University of Nigeria in Nasuka earlier for postgraduate examination. He brought actually the, the advert, you know, which got me to apply for the place. So I didn't know much about the place, I didn't hear about it. He advised Anatsui to apply here. I uh, was employed here in 1974, I came 1975 to resume duties from Ghana and uh, have been here since that time. By early 1970, before his arrival at Nsuka, El Anatsui was already making magnificent works of art. He made an elaborate collection of designs from used wooden trays, giving them a new look and life. The trays such as No Child is Born with All His Teeth, 1973, and Seriousness is Not Indicated by Redness of the Eyes, 1972, feature intricate decorative patterns and extensive use of the Ghanaian Adinkra motif. Ella Natsui's association with the University of Nigeria in Suka holds significant importance in his artistic journey. He joined the university's faculty in the Fine and Applied Arts Department, where he served as a professor and played a pivotal role in nurturing budding artists. During El Anatsui's time at the University of Nigeria in Suka, the Fine and Applied Arts Department was a hub for artistic innovation and exchange. Many talented artists and scholars such as Uchi Okeki, Chike Aniako, Obiora Udechukwu and Ola Oloidi were part of the university's vibrant artistic community, contributing to a stimulating environment for creative exploration. Artists, students and faculty members engaged in robust artistic dialogues, sharing ideas, techniques and cultural influences. Remember the person who seemed to be the leader of the park that time was Uche Okeke. But the people in his age bracket, I feel like uh, um, Obiora, Udechuku, who ran back from Zaria as a result of the pogrom in the in 1960s. After the Civil War, he didn't return to, to Zaria. He stayed back at, uh, at Nsuka. So when he, after he graduated from, from the university, he was employed there as a junior fellow. Uh, he did his master's and became a lecturer in the department. And it was at that time that, uh, around that time that El came and they shared, I think they shared an office and shared the uh, ideas together. It was when Ubiora was also working on his newly uh, in influenced drawing and paintings. Um, then there's somebody like uh, uh, Vincent Amefuna and he was in the graphic section. Then you had Benjo Iguilo, um, who was in the ceramic section. Then you had the uh, Okeke, C.S. Okeke, who was in the textile uh, section. Okwa Paide was, also, was in sculpture, but his own kind of sculpture was not based on Buli. He had this uh, cuboid forms that he produced that was peculiar to him. Um, then a year after um, El Anachi came, uh, Ola Oloidi also came from Howard where he was about to start his PhD. As I didn't mention Chike Aniako, who was who too, together with uh, um, Ucho Keke and the other people, raised the department to what it was uh, before uh, Ella actually came. 
The exchange of perspectives and artistic styles within this community likely played a significant role in shaping Anatsui's artistic orientation and his approach to materials, techniques and themes as was crystallized in his work and in Sibuli, 1995. It was like uh, the image of um, a conceptual image of a lady, you know, and he named uh, that figure Adin Sibuli, which means a combination of Uli, CBD, and um, Adinkra, you know, in one. A fusion of ideas from different sources. And cultural um, approach to, to, to art. During his tenure at UNN, Anatsui not only imparted knowledge, but also encouraged students to explore various artistic techniques and push the boundaries of conventional artistic norms. Of course, he taught me drawing 101. First lecture, first time. In my first drawing class, he was not really teaching us realism. I was a bit taken aback. I was like, what is this? Moving your, your wrist, drawing lines, you know, so many linear drawings, not really, um, um, you know, naturalistic representation of what is there. And we found his uh, method of uh, teaching uh, bizarre. Uh, we went to and we bought um, uh, reams of paper to make um, uh, drawings, doodles, if you like, because he will tell you not to. Uh, come with anything in mind, just um, draw lines, lines, lines. And we drew lines, lines and lines until we got sick of lines. But I worked obediently, just like every other student. Uh, looking back, you see that it was helpful, especially for those of us who are interested in, uh, uh, in lyricism uh, of the line. It was actually um, geared towards uh, strengthening our hands, um, freeing our imagination. In what he was teaching us became far more relevant now. He is someone who walks into the future. He walks at the frontiers of the art. We didn't know it as first year students. In the early 1980s, he made some remarkable paintings working with acrylic on various materials. Such works include Sacred Secret Seems to Unfold, 1980, Kente Reminiscine, 1984, and Zuma, 1984. And then, between 1986 and 87, he did some prints, such as History of Africa, 1987, and When I Last Wrote to You Too, 1987. The university environment provided Anatsui with a platform to expand his artistic horizons. It was during this time that he diversified his artistic expressions, transitioning from traditional wood carvings and ceramics to exploring new materials and innovative techniques. His freestanding woodworks showcase elaborate configurations created from extensive use of power tools, carved marks, and coloration from burning, forming highly detailed textured patterns inspired by traditional African motifs and mark making. Wonder Masquerade, 1990, and Chip Off the Old Block, 1991, symbolizes a sense of continuity and the passing down of cultural values. Some other similar works were created within this early 1990s. He also worked extensively on making art from a combination of wooden panels with highly detailed relief forms made using angle grinder, chainsaw, router, tempera, and burning. These wall-hanging works of art, their sculpted detailed designs and colorful presentation markedly blur the line between painting and sculpture. Though works like Ikoro 1990 and Sleeping Cloth 1993 were made in the early 1990s, his works on wooden panels date as early as 1985, with works such as Between Onicha and Asaba, and continues, spanning decades with works such as Keyboard of Life 2022 and Rainbow Hues 2022. El Anatsui's wooden panel works have been a tremendous source of influence and inspiration for contemporary artists such as Chijioki Onora and Gerald Chukuma. Chijioki Onora 
who also taught me, created his own vocabulary out of Enonazi's wooden, wooden panels. Gerard Chukuma was able to like enact his own creative vocabulary uh, in the way he made forms and employed color in the making of his wooden panel. Before his iconic bottle cap works, Anatsui explored metalwork and created works from carved wood and metal elements. Works like Man with Offspring, 1991, featured carved wood combined with metal insets, showcasing a blend of textures and forms. These earlier artworks highlight the diversity of Anatsui's artistic explorations, emphasizing his experimentation with materials, dedication to craftsmanship, cultural influences, and thematic variations. While they differ significantly from his famed bottle cap sculptures, they laid the foundation for his later innovative techniques and themes. Anatsui's ability to merge traditional African aesthetics with contemporary expressions was evident in these earlier works, showcasing his artistic journey and the development of his distinctive style. While his earlier works may not have the grand scale or use of bottle caps that became characteristic of his later pieces, they laid the groundwork for his artistic evolution. His exploration of materials, cultural themes and artistic techniques during this period played a pivotal role in shaping his artistic vision, ultimately leading to the inventive and distinctive style he became known for with the bottle cap sculptures. It was while at Ensuka that El Anatsui discovered a valuable material that helped to redefine his art form and form a significant aspect of his creative adventure. The inspiration for the work probably began here as the bottle caps were first found here in Nansuka. In fact, the idea of using bottle caps came certainly as a surprise, you know. He, he was a person that used to do some trekking. You know, he would walk and um, uh, during one of those uh, uh, sessions of walking, because he would trek from the campus and head towards Oba. Actually, you are talking about Omsuka, but I'm talking of Oba. But I too would have liked to ask him a question. Now that he has moved to Ghana, does he still come to Oba to collect the bottle cap, or has he located another Oba in, uh, in Ghana to <laughs> collect? The bottle cap. I know where he started. It was the ones at Oba, and it must have been used so that he will be able to, you know, it will be thing, be able to have some affinity with the people that uh, that use them. The dominant feature of Ellen Atsui's work is his ability to transform seemingly mundane materials into visually striking, thought-provoking, and monumental installations that transcend cultural boundaries. His art challenges conventional artistic norms, addressing global issues while celebrating African heritage, making him a distinctive and influential figure in contemporary art beyond the Nsuka Art School. Furthermore, the University of Nigeria in Nsuka holds a special place in African art history, known for its vibrant art scene and contributions to contemporary African art. Anatsui's association with this esteemed institution highlights the synergy between academia and artistic practice, contributing significantly to the development of contemporary art. El Anatsui's contributions to the University of Nigeria in Nasuka, UNN, extended beyond teaching he also engaged in various artistic endeavors within the university community. Anatsui created multiple site-specific installations within the university premises. These include two magnificent sculptures located around the brutalist structure housing the Faculty of Physical Sciences, also referred to as Abuja Building. He collaborated with students, faculty members, or local artists on creative projects. His presence within the university community has significantly impacted the local art scene, contributing to exhibitions, art events, and fostering a culture of artistic exploration and expression.
One of such collaborations led to the exhibition of works from emerging artists. He, he curated two exhibitions, Lagos. He titled one of the exhibitions, New Energies. Um, and he had the exhibition run in two galleries in Lagos simultaneously, the Nimbus Art Center and My Dream uh, Gallery, both in Ikoi, Lagos. Anatsui's influence on students and emerging artists went beyond creating physical artworks. His mentorship and guidance inspired and shaped the artistic pursuits of many individuals within the university community. You cannot take El Anatsui from his products anywhere in the world. Any person that passed through him must have a DNA of him artistically. In this case, this one is a direct DNA because uh, this, the actual material he used and he kept and uh, I inherited, let me, let me use that word, I inherited from him because uh, I'm one of his products. And I told you he used the aluminum part of it, why am I now using the similar pla uh, plastic part of it? And uh, this thing originally are uh, installed inside the bottle cap as a protective device to the drinks that it covered. I was advised by Professor Eran Nasri and I started work from his studio too. So obviously you could see some kind of uh, influences in one way or the other, no matter how remote it may be, but you, obviously if you look where you could see some influences there. Anatsui participated in artistic dialogues, critiques and discussions within the university, providing insights and perspectives that influence the artistic community's discourse and creative directions. From his works and practice, the Igwe Buike concept became a definitive stylistic and conceptual approach to art making along with Uli, which have become marked features for most artists of the Nsuka Art School all over the world. Ellen Atsui has collaborated with numerous galleries and institutions globally, showcasing his monumental artworks and contributing to the international art scene. Some of the prominent galleries, museums and institutions he has worked with or where his artworks have been exhibited include Jack Shaneman Gallery, New York, USA. Anatsui has been represented by the Jack Shaneman Gallery, which has exhibited his works and played a crucial role in promoting his art in the United States. October Gallery, London, UK. This gallery has showcased El Anatsui's artworks and has been instrumental in introducing his monumental tapestries to audiences in Europe. Venice Biennale, Venice, Italy. Anatsui represented his home country Ghana at the Venice Biennale and received international acclaim for his innovative bottle cap tapestries exhibited at this prestigious art event. Centre Pompidou, Paris, France. Anatsui's works have been featured in exhibitions at the Centre Pompidou, one of Europe's most renowned modern and contemporary art museums. Smithsonian Institute, Washington, D.C., USA. Anatsui's monumental installations have been exhibited at various Smithsonian museums, including the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art, providing an opportunity for a broader audience to experience his art. Haus der Kunst, Munich, Germany. Anatsui's artworks have been displayed in exhibitions at Haus der Kunst, a prominent contemporary art museum in Germany. Royal Academy of Arts, London, UK. Anatsui's artworks have been exhibited at the Royal Academy of Arts, where his monumental sculptures captivated audiences and garnered critical acclaim. El Anatsui was appointed Honorary Academician in 2014 and is the first African artist appointed by London's Royal Academy.
These collaborations and exhibitions at prestigious galleries and institutions have contributed significantly to El Anatsui's global recognition and solidified his position as a pioneering figure in the contemporary art world. His artworks have been celebrated for their innovation, social commentary and captivating aesthetic appeal. Elanatsui's iconic and innovative artworks have captured the attention of prominent art collectors, institutions and enthusiasts worldwide due to their monumental scale, innovative use of materials and profound artistic expression. Some renowned institutions that have acquired Elanatsui's works or have shown significant interest in his art include the British Museum, Known for its extensive collection of global artworks, the British Museum has acquired artworks by Ella Natsui, recognizing the significance of his contributions to contemporary art. The Metropolitan Museum of Art This renowned institution in New York City has showcased Ella Natsui's monumental sculptures and is considered a prominent collector of his artworks. The Museum of Modern Art, MoMA MoMA, located also in New York City, has featured El Anatsui's artworks in its exhibitions, and some of his pieces are part of the museum's collection. Tate Modern As one of the leading contemporary art museums in the UK, the Tate Modern has exhibited El Anatsui's artworks and might possess pieces from his diverse body of work. Various private collectors, including art patrons, philanthropists and individuals passionate about contemporary art, have acquired Elanatsui's artworks for their private collections, contributing to the artist's growing recognition and appreciation. His art continues to be sought after and celebrated by collectors and art enthusiasts worldwide, contributing to his enduring legacy in the art world. Also, El Anatsui has had numerous prominent exhibitions globally. Here are some of his notable exhibitions. When I last wrote to you about Africa, 2010-2012, this travelling exhibition toured various locations globally, including the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto, Canada, Blanton Museum of Art, the University of Texas, and the North Carolina Museum of Art, Raleigh, USA. It featured a comprehensive collection of Anatsui's iconic bottle cap tapestries and sculptures, highlighting his artistic advancement and thematic depth. Gravity and Grace Monumental Works by El Anatsui 2013-2015 Organized by the Akron Art Museum in Ohio, USA, this exhibition traveled extensively across North America, showcasing Anatsui's monumental sculptures. It explored the themes of materiality, transformation, and social critique present in his art. Triumphant Scale 2019 Hosted by Haus der Kunst in Munich, Germany, this exhibition focused on Anatsui's expansive works that merge sculpture and painting. It emphasized the artist's mastery in creating large-scale installations and his ability to engage with architectural spaces. Elanatsui Meina, held at the Goodman Gallery, Johannesburg, South Africa. This exhibition was the first solo exhibition of Elanatsui in South Africa. Curated by Bissy Silva, it showcased his exploration of materials beyond bottle caps, such as sketchbooks, drawings, letters, exhibition planning and instruction documents, highlighting his continued innovation and experimentation in art. These exhibitions, along with many others held in prestigious museums and galleries across the world, have contributed to El Anatsui's international acclaim and recognition as a pioneering contemporary artist. His monumental installations and thought-provoking artworks continue to captivate a global audience. These have only logically accumulated in his most recent monumental installations at the Tate Modern Turbine Hall, and Hyundai Commission tagged El Anatsui behind the Red Moon. This marks a significant milestone in El Anatsui's journey from Anyako, 
This exhibition, Behind the Red Moon, stands as a monumental sculptural installation crafted from numerous metal bottle tops and fragments. Through the meticulous processes of crumpling, crushing, and stitching, these components are artfully assembled into expansive panels, creating vast, abstract realms of color, shape, and line. This commissioned piece further extends Anatsui's exploration of the interconnected histories of encounters and the movement of goods and people during the transatlantic slave trade. Originating from Nigeria, the liquor bottle tops employed in this installation are integral to a contemporary industry rooted in the colonial trade routes of the past. It draws inspiration from his early years in Ghana and his creative journey, as well as the influences of the global and multicultural space that dominates modern life. Behind the Red Moon is presented as an artwork unfolding in three distinct acts. Anatsui's impact transcends his art. It inspires a generation of artists, fostering a renewed appreciation for global art artistry. His legacy serves as a testament to art's transformative power. He's still working like a young man. So why should we, some of us who are his students, I mean, he supervised my peers, why should I give up? Why should I be lazy? I, that's what his, the scale of his work tells me. Tells me, my friend, get up and go and walk. You know, and I, I, I don't know, I'm still crawling. I hope I, I, I'll get the kind of energy um, he has. Half of what he can do. Hell is good. He's big. He's hardworking. I admire him a lot for that. I cite him a lot as an example, telling students that passion must go before profit. Um, you have to put in passion, passion, then uh, profit. You don't just uh, uh, come in and everybody says, oh, where is Ella, not you, or where is whoever we want him. Uh, you have to do something, and I think he really worked hard at an earlier uh, at his earlier uh, stage to be able to push himself to where he is today. El Anatsui's journey from the heart of Ghana to international acclaim epitomizes the essence of artistic innovation, cultural heritage, and the profound impact of creative expression. Today, El Anatsui's legacy endures, reflecting a lifetime devoted to art that transcends cultural divides, redefines materiality, and speaks volumes about the human experience.